Hi everyone, I'm Chad Colby. Welcome to the next PyRep video on a lot of upgrades that you can do to your aircraft. My aircraft is a Cessna 205 and consistently I get questions about the instrument panel in my aircraft. I was very fortunate when I bought this airplane. It had a very, very solid instrument panel. Of course it was IFR rated, but they had spent a fair amount of money on this airplane about 15 years prior to me purchasing it. And when I say that, Garmin 430 had modern at the time, audio panel, had an SL30 with a glide slope indicator, good transponder. This is a really good instrument panel. When it was time for me though to do some upgrades, I was so fortunate because it had the good foundation. A lot of those upgrades were super, super easy. What I mean is my audio panel, it's as simple as pull it out, slide the new one in, and you're in business. And of course, the new one's got some of those new features with Bluetooth. But in my first step of upgrades, I did just that. I did the audio panel, I pulled out the 430, and opted for a 750. And let me tell you, if you're one of those folks that's on the fence and you have the real estate to go from 650 to 750, I was as close as you could get to just putting in a 650 and saving a little bit of money. I am so glad I didn't. Actually, the shop that I ended up going with is one that you're very familiar of, or at least the parent company, Bordy's out in Ohio, for a lot of our pilot stuff. Well, they have an avionics shop on the field that's been there for a long, long time, nearly 25 years. And they were very good at educating me on what to put in this aircraft. So I decided to go with a 750. I put in the uh, 345 GTX transponder, what gives me ADS-B in and out. And, and at that time, I did the first G5, which is the G5 attitude indicator. What I also did not do at that time, and, and it was a largely to do with budget and a little uncertainty on my part, was I didn't recut the panel on the pilot side. At that time, we simply pulled out old instruments, replaced new, and I went flying the aircraft. And let me tell you, I was so excited. I got ads in and out. It gives me traffic and weather on my 750 and locally on an iPad in the aircraft. It works so good. But I knew before I left and was actually even home that I couldn't wait to get the HSI. I didn't do it at that time just because it was a very new instrument. And on a lot of instruments, a lot of folks wait. And my shop really wanted me to take my time with this. So I waited another year and I put in the HSI, and that allowed me to remove my VAC system. Some of the questions I get is, oh my gosh, you don't have a VAC system. No, I do not. I got to remove that, save the weight, but most importantly, I would tell you I am more reliable. I have had a vacuum system failure in this aircraft before, and now I've got two G5s. Both can be an attitude indicator in a matter of seconds. If one fails, you hit the button, it switches, or it'll switch automatically. They both have a four-hour battery backup I'm very comfortable with that. Recently, I was back to Sporties, to Cincinnati Avionics, and did updates on the software. Super easy process. They hooked up a computer, updated all the systems, and we also updated to the 750XI GPS Navcom. And let me tell you, this thing absolutely rocks. You know right away when you turn this thing on that it is an absolute new animal. You're going to tell by the sharpness of the screen. You're going to see how fast it boots up. Clearly this device, and, and Chuck also informed me this at Cincinnati Avionics, is really set up for the future in terms of its capabilities. And I really like that. I'm a technology geek. I've had every iPhone. I think I'm on number 13 or 14 now. Every pad iPad they've come out with. I, I'm that guy. So I, I wanted that. But I really like how quick it is to start up. As you can tell at startup, this thing boots up so fast. It's super awesome. The other part of that that works great too is I think it's important to notice we're not updating the information off the card every time. Now I do have the Flightstream 510. You could see that in another PyRep video, which allows me to update the data from my iPad and update the GTA unit very quickly. And especially now with that new processor, it uploads like a snap. But I wanted to give you just a little feel of what the inside of my airplane looks like. One of the other questions I get all the time is, oh my gosh, Chad, you have not tackled the right-hand side of your instrument panel yet. 
And I'll be honest with you, I got an engine that's at TBO that work, that runs great. It's had oil samples basically since it was put in the aircraft. Get it bore scope, we check everything, and it's running great. So I'm not really that critical on the fact I want electronic engine monitor so bad. And I'd love to make the right-hand side completely modern. But we all know the reality of that. That is a very, very expensive endeavor. It would be awesome, in my opinion, to get rid of all that old technology and replace it with some new. And don't get me wrong, I'll probably do that in the future. But on that conversation about an instrument panel, I also want you to notice we made a pretty big change actually this last year when we recut the pilot side. When I did my avionic upgrades, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted that to look like over there. And I was highly encouraged by my avionics shop. If you don't know, just put, swap out the G5s and run it until you know exactly what you want. When the G3X came out, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm putting one of these in my plane. But bad news. It's about a half inch short of fitting because it will affect the structure. And I didn't want to go down that route to modify any of that. And that we all know that process is, 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 is pretty scary. So this past winter, I moved my G5 to the center and I freed up a lot of real estate on the left hand side of my panel. And that did something I've been wanting to do for years. And that's get that iPad off my yoke. And that allowed me to put the iPad over to the left side. Now I have a mini in my airplane now. Um, it will fit a larger iPad like an iPad Pro. I've got one of those as well, but I prefer the mini. I like that size as a nice backup unit. Of course, using the Flightstream 510, that's hooked right into the aircraft so I can swap flight plans and do all that fun stuff. And of course I'm getting weather and traffic on there from my uh, 345 GTX transponder. But I wanted to give you a little, little more background into the flight deck, or if you would, or the instrument panel on my Cessna 205. Love the airplane. Of course, there's some added touches the more you look. We got a new glare shield on the top, which works so good. It looks so modern. And of course, we've added some LED lighting behind all the instruments that look fantastic at night. Remember, there's a lot more pie reps that you can look at on my channel on YouTube. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you enjoy this video.